Let's say you've finished collecting your data from the water simulations and now you're ready to analyze uh, the data to determine the relationship between the different variables so that you can uh, project uh, the values uh, based on given uh, initial conditions of the values. So, uh, so we enter the data and we draw our causal map and uh, and basically, we in our map we're saying A affects D, B affects D, C affects D, and then D affects E. And so, really, the question is if, let's say, if A increases, how does that change the value of D? And when D changes, how does that affect the value of E? And we want to determine how the value of E uh, after, say, 14 days from now. With, uh, these changes occurring each of the 14 days. So to create our sp spreadsheet model, we have to begin again by looking, identifying uh, the relationship between A and D. And one way you could do that, of course, is just to take the slope value uh, between all the data points in column A all the data points in column D and we get a slope of negative 0.30 but in reality we know that uh, D's value is also affected by variable B and D and so the, to, to really look at to really identify the relationship between A and D we have to uh, look at the values where B and C values remain constant over time. So, to do that, uh, the one thing you can do in your spreadsheets is to turn on the data filter tool. Oops, let's try that again. Select all five columns. Select filter. And let's see, where does it, let's just take a look at all the values of C, where C equals 1. And then we also see B remains constant at 2, uh, while C remains constant in row 3, 5, 6, and 11. So we can select B value equals one or two that is. All right, now we have B and C remaining constant. So to compute uh, the slope between A and D using only these data points, we can now select all four cells from column B and all four cells from column B. And we find that the true relationship is not negative 0.30, but negative 0.25. So, turn off the filter. Okay, so likewise we do the same thing to compute the relationship between D and E, uh, but given that no other variables are believed to directly affect E, and that only D affects E, we don't have to uh, hold a, B, and C values constant to determine the relationship between D and E. So all we do then is compute the slope between all the data points for D and all the data points on the column E. And we get negative 0.45. Okay. So given now that we have the relationships between A and D and D and E, we can do some forecasting by creating a spreadsheet model. And so over here, um, uh, we'll say that we're given initial values of A at 10 and initial values for D at 7 and 5 for E. And we're going to say that values A will ch change or increase by 1 uh, from day 0 up to two weeks later, day 14. And so we can just do a formula. Uh, day 1 value will equal this, plus 
plus the rate of change here. And we'll keep that constant rho 2 from the dollar sign. And we're going to just cut and paste that same formula so that the values increment 1 each day until I go up to 24 on day 14. Okay, now to determine how these values A affect D, uh, we know that uh, for every unit change in A, we get a 0.25 decrease in D, right? So to do that, we create a formula where we take, I'll show you this, equals the initial value of D plus whatever changes occurred in A from this day from and the previous day, and then times the slope value I5 listed in cell I5. And we get 6.75. So we'll just copy that formula and paste it into the remaining cells in column D. And what we find is by day 14, uh, with every unit increase in A from day 1 to day 14, the final value for D is 3.5. All right, now we want to see how D affects E. So likewise, we're going to do the same thing. cell value E is equal to the initial value of E plus whatever changes that occurred in D from the current day and the previous day uh, times the slope value which was negative 0.45 and again we want to put a dollar sign there so that when we copy and paste the formula it still references the cell value in row 8 alright and then we click Turn. And I just we want to show it in two decimal points. All right, so now we copy the formula and we paste it. So as D decreases, E should increase, and it looks like we see that trend. Okay, and so here we have our spreadsheet model. Given these initial values for A, D, and E, and knowing the rates of change between A and D, and the rates of change between D and E, we're able to forecast two weeks ahead of time that the final value of E will be 6.6. So uh, that's just an illustration of how to create a spreadsheet model uh, based on the data that you collect from the water simulations and uh, based on how you uh, uh, use the causal map to determine what variables, if any, need to be held constant in order to determine uh, the relationship or the slope values between uh, two specific variables. So if you have any questions, uh, please post them to the question and answer form and uh, good luck.